Hello folks, it's Jay and Peel here again, and this is my tabletop review of Sarge the Dog. Sarge is a Jack Russell, he's got ambidextrous ears, nah, I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about the Ruger Mini 14 Ranch Rifle. It is my favorite weapon. Uh, there on the table I got uh, right here my Haji head rag. Uh, that's pretty authentic. I picked it up off the ground in Alcute Air Base, Iraqi Air Base. Uh, there's my Camulus pocket knife. First generation Tapco 30 round mags and a Ruger 5 round mag. Let me set the my digital camera and video mode on my, uh, I don't know what you call it, on the hasty tripod. Alright. This is also not just going to be my review and disassembly assembly of the Ruger Mini 14. This is going to be a video response to a guy's YouTube channel called, uh, let me think, it's Miller USAF, his YouTube channel. Check out his Mini. He likes the old Minis. I like this new one with the heat shield, but uh, kind of showing it off to him. Uh, before we get into the disassembly and disassembly, we'll talk about a few things. Uh, Ruger changed that sight over the years. It's a very accurate sight. Uh, I'll talk about accuracy of this weapon in a minute. But uh, I like the old style better, and I'm going to change this out. There's a company, I can't remember what they're called, but they make one like the Grand that has a, a windage and elevation knobs. And I want those because I do... Uh, the way I shoot, if I'm shooting over a hundred, a hundred or less, I just leave the sight alone and I'll adjust, you know, for the distance and windage, kind of Kentucky windage. But uh, I was trained in the Marines to make sight adjustments because, you know, we had windage elevation knobs. And uh, uh, after getting proficient with that, I like it a lot better because you still put your sight dead on. And when you train and practice enough, you'll be able to judge that wind and you'll be able to judge elevation. Uh, uh, you know your distance of a target once you get good at that and you, you get good at putting them into your, your gun you're going to be a lot more accurate than Kentucky windage or I should say I am I don't want you know I don't want a bunch of people leaving comments like you know I can hit you know 800 yards using Kentucky windage but uh, but uh yeah that's why, that's why I'm going to do that even on my bolt guns I had uh I, I had put a uh, with, on the scopes, I put knobs so I can make adjustments. Legs just walked in. She's standing there like she can't walk through the room. But it, Sorry. Don't be as far in here and all the other videos. But anyways, uh, but it's an accurate side of, on the accuracy of this gun. It's got a reputation for being inaccurate, and I think that stems back to the old ones. They had very thin barrels. But you got to think about what the gun was designed to do. Uh... Back in the day when they had that thin barrel, they, they were just as accurate as the M16A1s. I mean, I, I guarantee you. Uh, and I just say that because with the M16A2 and the Marines, we shot at the 200, the 300, and the 500 yard line and at a man-sized target. And with this, I could, I could do all that with this. Now, you're talking about your civilian ARs that come with heavy barrels, bull barrels, fluted bull barrels, and no. But you're not doing a real comparison there because they got that heavy barrel. But I got bolt guns in there, you know, 308, 22, 250, uh, 17 HMR. Well, 17 HMR don't have a heavy barrel, but uh, they got heavy barrels, and uh, I use them as pinpoint. I mean, dead on, you know, one bullet hole touching bullet hole accuracy. This is a carbine. I use this for uh, coyote and hog hunting. You know, when I'm out. When I'm out hunting, you know, I need to bring it up fast. And it, it's plenty accurate to that. And then my last coyote I got, it was at 200 yards in the back of the head. The coyote's head is only about that wide. You know, he had looked at us, he spotted me, he turned, and he started trotting. I raised the weapon, squeezed off around, and, you know, I got him. And, you know, if y'all believe me, don't believe me, I'm going to make videos proving it. So, you know, Miller, USAF, had asked for no trolling. Troll, troll all you want on my channel because I'm just going to make you look bad. But, uh, some of the other things they had, uh, they done, they put these wings to, uh, protect the front sight 
front sight tip or front sight post. Now uh, it's a thinner front sight post than the old ones. Uh, like I said, Miller really likes the lines of, of his, his old one. I like that heat shield. I think it looks tough. You know, it makes it look kind of like more like an M14, M1A. Uh, so things, some things I'm gonna add to it. I'm gonna put a, a flash suppressor. I want to find one that looks like an M14 flash suppressor, just for looks. I'm gonna put a Tapco stock, and I told you about the rear sight. Uh, what I'm not gonna do, since I, I like shooting open sights. I mean, yeah, I got scoped weapons, and I, I I like shooting them too. But I like shooting open sights, a couple hundred yards. Man, that gets you some bragging rights out in the civilian world. You know, uh, like I said, you're in the Marines, every Marine shoots open sights up to 500 yards. But you get out here around these civilians who only shoot off bipods and scopes, and you hit 200 yard target from a standing position, bang, 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 and you're, you're, you're pulling off a group like that. Man, that's some bragging rights there. But, uh, and it's a lot of fun too. I, that's just how I prefer to shoot. But, uh, enough rambling. Storytelling. Let's uh, take out the mag. Oh, and I'll show you. Uh, you know, uh, one disadvantage of this compared to the AR is the mag release until you get used to it. But the way I change, you know, especially the the way I've been training here lately. I've been training for a three gun. I'm gonna use this in a three gun. Uh, I'll be shooting, bang, 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 out. Grab my other mag. Hit the mag release. See, that pretty much just falls out. Put the new one in. Uh, you know, you might say it's because it's, it's the Tapco mag. Put in a Ruger factory mag. Same thing. It's a good mag release once you get used to it. But if you're used to an AR and M16 like I was, you do have to train. Another thing you have to train on is getting used to this uh, right handed bolt. Uh, what I've started doing. I can't decide what I like better, whether I turn it up or I go down, but that's all you got to do. So let's get into the assembly or disassembly of the weapon. You, uh, of course, if you got a sling on, you got to take the sling off or you're going to tie the gun to the stock. But, uh, first thing you want to do, I'm skipping ahead, make sure the weapon's clear. No ammo. So, uh, First thing you want to do, see that hole on your trigger guard? Take a clean rod or a screwdriver, stick it in there and pull back. That breaks loose your trigger assembly. I'm just holding it like that so it don't fall out. It comes out like so, and that unlocks your barrel, your upper receiver. Now you got your upper receiver in your stock. Your upper receiver, it comes apart real simple too. Uh, first you take off your heat guard you know it just held on by that little spring clamp whatever you call it you got your operating rod and spring I like to pull them out just pull pressure toward the pistons and it comes out like so that's your I call it the operating rod and spring if I'm getting it wrong feel free to correct me uh, Next you have, see that little, that holds your operating rod. Be very careful because that pin just falls right out. The manual doesn't say anything about having to take that out to clean it. But I do because I always drop this little pin on the carpet and I'm scared of losing it. Now what I do so I don't lose it, you know, I just place it in that hole. Place it in there like so, set it on the table. Next, you want to take out your piston. I have a little trouble with this, so bear with me. But uh, especially doing it for a camera, just push it to the rear. You know, make a pressure like that, and it'll come right up out of this groove. Uh, next thing you want to do, or you, you have to do, or you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting your bolt out. You got your uh, bolt catch right here. Take a cleaning rod or a little pocket knife like I'm using and mash down on see that press press downward on it well a lot of times I take a cleaning rod like so I bump it with my hand I'll show you what I did this is the part 
it's just a little cover uh, protects your bolt catch you know you just uh, bump it out of there this is your bolt catch it comes out very easy just press down on the bolt release or the bolt button and it falls out very simple design it does things do, do not have to be complicated to work well uh, this grand style action this action of gun has killed many bad guys in the past in the grand and in the m14 uh, competition shooters still use the m14 set up in a sniper configuration uh, next is this grand style bolt I would like to see Ruger write up the guy who wrote the manual that come with my gun because he just says you know he gives you clear instructions to this point you know pull the bolt up but at this point he says just wiggle it around until it comes out and man when I first got it it was a, I had a hard time taking this bolt out and putting it in I still not as smooth at it as I'd like to be but uh so if you if you got a trick to take this out and, and put it back in, you know, real easy, send me a video response or or, or in the comments tell me cuz uh I still fumble with it a little bit and I'd like to be smoother at it. But the bolt in the instructions it says don't take it apart or it doesn't say don't take it apart, it just doesn't tell you how. Like it's not necessary for cleaning. And I never did before last night before I cleaned this weapon last night. But uh, I decided to take it apart. And what you got to do, what I found is I use this little pocket knife here. It's a camulus. And it's got this little, I don't know, punch thing. I, I don't know what that thing's for. But press down, press down on that little pin and then pull that extractor out. You know, you see the other end of it right there. Just pull it straight out and then your firing pin will fall out. And I ran a Q-tip down in there, and it, it it had a whole lot of carbon. Uh, so I wish I'd done it sooner. I like to clean my weapon after after every time I shoot. That way, it's not so tough to clean. But uh, yeah, clean this definitely. Just be very careful when you do get this extractor out. It leaves that little pin. That pin is tiny. Be very careful not to lose it, because if you do, you're going to be calling Ruger or Gunsmith for parts. But uh, now you got your upper receiver. This is uh, as far as I've ever broke down the weapon before. But what I like to do is take either Ballastol, CLP, Type Oil, if it's not that dirty, or solvent. When I clean it, you know, I'll put everything on my cleaning table, line it up. But, but I'll spray everything down with that oil or that solvent. And I like to start by, by punching the bore. Now this weapon, it's not like an AR. You can't take a cleaning rod and just drop it down the barrel. Because uh, this is in the way. You either got to use, if you want to go this direction with it, you got to use a bore snake. I don't have a bore snake right now, so I use a cleaning rod. You just got to be very careful not to scratch your, uh, your, your crown, the crown of your barrel. So just, so just watch out for that if you're using a cleaning rod. And after that, I like to run patches through it uh, until the patch comes out 100% clean. I don't, I don't settle for a gray patch, you know. It's got to be clean. And then with the uh, CLP, I just scrub, scrub everything, scrub it down to here, wipe it off. This is going to be probably your most lengthiest part of your cleaning, because this is where the gas goes down. And it, it, it shoots back, pushes the piston back, which pushes the bolt to the rear, and it comes back forward. This is where your carbon builds up at. And an AR is one of the features that makes it more reliable than an AR or an M16. And an AR, it all builds up in your chamber and, and in your bore and on your bolt face and your bolt carrier group. And uh, also in the AR, that's where all your heat builds up and, and uh, deteriorates your lubrication. And I also cause lots of jams. In this style of weapon, in any piston gun, even piston ARs, this is where your heat and carbon builds up is up front. But uh, I'll scrub this down, scrub this, this little deal will be black, scrub it down until it's chrome again, and I like to take Q-tips. And uh, you Marines out there know, know all about Q-tips, but uh, I Q-tip it everything until the Q-tip is white.
until I can touch something and the Q-tip stays white. Next, I go down to scrubbing. This ain't real dirty, but I still um, like to scrub it with AP brush, wipe it off, scrub all this. Uh, Q-tip in here. Uh, now, once you get here, you think this is going to be dirty. This, this is never real dirty, so I, I scrub it, and I still Q-tip clean all the fine parts, and then I'm done with that. Move on to the bolt, same thing. Uh, oil or solvent, scrub it real good, wipe it down. I like to Q-tip all the fine little areas, get all the carbon off. If you take the bolt apart, you know, run your Q-tip in and out of the uh, firing pin housing or chamber, whatever you call it. Uh, just be careful. Don't leave any fuzz or hairs of, of the Q-tip in there, you know. That might obstruct that firing pin from hitting that primer. Uh, this, this as a whole is not that dirty. This part will be real dirty. This is where the gas shoots into it and it, it blows it back. Uh, that takes a bunch of Q-tips, uh, but I clean this real good. The trigger assembly, it's never real dirty. I usually wipe it down, Q-tip where I can't reach. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to play with your trigger, well, it usually doesn't go off from that position, but, uh, you know, that's it. That's what it looks like. There's your hammer. That part strikes the, uh, firing pin on the bolt which strikes the primer and makes the round go off uh, when you put it together it's got to be cocked so and I don't think it'll cock unless I close it no there it goes oh I did close it so clean that real well this I usually just wipe down it's usually not too bad all these little parts I showed you I just wipe them down now when I'm done, when everything's perfectly clean, some people say I use too much oil, but some, some, now, now, I agree with them in a, in a perspective. Don't use so much oil, you got it dripping down out of your weapon or dripping into places where it shouldn't be. But I like to put a light coat of oil on everything and a little, little medium coat, you know, on the pieces that get friction, that rub metal on metal or have heat involved. And I'll tell you why everything gets a coat of oil. One is to prevent rust if you got any scratches on your finish or anything, but also uh, it's a trick we learned in the Marines, especially when I carried the machine gun, carried the 240 Golf. If you oil a lot of your parts, now granted you can't oil it like this out in the desert. We, we learned that lesson, you know, back in 03. But uh, any other condition, you know, go ahead and oil it like this, put a real light coat of oil over everything because it will help it, it, will, it the carbon produced from the, the powder burning it won't stick as hard it'll be a lot easier to clean so now I've gone over cleaning a quick down and dirty of cleaning it's ready to put back together like I said just reverse the order you got your bolt and this is a pain in the butt like I said if you know a, a better way help me out with it uh, send me a video response or you know put it in the comments but all it all it says in the manual is to uh, you know just kind of wiggle it into position and it'll fall in, which we got it in now. Now that you got your bolt in, you can put your bolt catch, your bolt hold open, back together. Which first put your pin in, pin and spring in that 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 hole. Uh, be careful. See that little notch. You want it facing the bolt hold open and you'll see why. The actual operating device is pretty simple. You got a hole in a, in a big opening. You know, you can see where to line that hole up. Once you get in there, press down on this button a little bit and it has to fall in that notch. Then you put your little protective door back on it. Now, you're ready to like I said, I should really look up what this part's called, I don't know. But uh, just slide it back in the place it was. Put your pin in. Be careful not to lose this pin. I wish they, I don't know, I guess they don't need it, but it'd be better that pin had, see what I mean? Had some kind of retainer on it, like a, I don't know, I'm not an engineer, but it, that'd just make it better. Now this part's a little tricky. Or, sorry, I'm getting ahead. I wasn't ready for this yet. Skipping a step. 
put your piston back in. And uh, the same way it came out, put it on the track here, line it up. Now the tricky part's lining up the. Uh, you'll you'll see it. It's got a little nipple or knob on the end of the bolt, lining that up. But uh, got that together. Now you're ready for that part I put in while ago. Uh, of course, put the hole facing the, the piston. Get your pin. Be very careful. Don't lose it. Put your. I gotta set it down for a second. You gotta use two hands. See how easy that pin is? It just falls right out. Uh, I wish they built it to a little bit, a little bit tighter. Um, this part's gonna be a little tricky. Me showing y'all. But you put your open end of your spring in that hole in your piston, and then the operating rod will go inside that little cup thing you just put back in. But uh, I'm going to set it on the table like this. Because like I said, it is a, it's just a little tricky. It ain't hard. That, that spring can get kind of out of control on you. But uh, after you got it in there, double check make sure it's not hung. See, see what I mean about that pin? That pin come out a little bit. having trouble with it. What's was bad, what's funny is I never have this much trouble with it off camera. But uh, you want to make sure the operating rod ain't hung on that, that pin. Because what will happen is when you try to rack your bolt to the rear, it, it, it won't. It, it, it'll only go halfway back and you have to take it all the way apart again. So you got your stock. Another thing I didn't go over, wipe this metal heat shield down real well. Cause that's where a lot of carbon comes out and it don't stick it's uh you know the carbon's never stuck on there real hard just take a clean rag or paper towel wipe that out real good but now you're ready to put your upper receiver back on your stock just like it came apart everything fits right right together like a glove put your trigger group in like i said it your trigger has hammer has to be cocked for it to go back together uh, just slide right in there and then close it. <coughs> uh, <coughs> last thing I do, put my heat shield back on, give it a little slap. Now you're ready for the functions check. Uh, I, I function check. I got used to the functions check in the, of the M16A2. Uh, I don't know a specific instruction way, but all I do is bolt goes to the rear real smooth. Pull the trigger, trigger fires, rack it again, put it on safe, weapon does not fire, insert a magazine, bolt locks to the rear with the magazine as it should. Then I check the bolt hole open, it holds it open like it should. Your functions check. Your weapon is a uh, is good to go. That's my <coughs> that's my Mini 14 disassembly, cleaning, and assembly. Told y'all the upgrades I'm gonna give to it, and gave y'all a little bit of idea of what kind of videos we got coming up. We got a uh, KD uh, Marine Corps known distance range. I'm gonna simulate it. I'm going to shoot 200 yards, 300 yards, 500 yards with this, and I'm going to show y'all some more of the CQB training I've been doing. Uh, I've never taken an official class, so really all I have to go off of is what I find on YouTube and different gun forms and what I learned in the Marines. But uh, that's my mini. That's my video response to Miller USAF. Show off your mini. And uh, I'm going to invite anyone who watches this video to show off their mini on my channel. I'm new to YouTube, I'm new to making gun videos, and uh, I just like to interact with more gun channels, so if you got a mini or really any particular carbine you'd like to show off and, and tell me why you like it, put it as a video response. Thanks.